Ladies and gentlemen and the panelists, assalamu alaikum. It is indeed a pleasure to be here because I have been very concerned about violence against women forever, really. And uh, even when I was uh, in the Law and Justice Committee in the, Na in the National Assembly, it was something which we talked about a lot. And that is where I can bring in a perspective of what I actually feel. It's been, it, it, Mr. Uh, Barrister Farooq Naseem has given a very clear uh, picture of the laws which have been passed in Pakistan. In the Law and Justice Committee, uh, people came up with severe punishments that instead of 10 years, some punishment should be taken to 14 years. Instead of 14 years, for example, somebody should be hanged for this crime or punished with death for the other crime. I believe that the legislation in Pakistan is almost enough. And we have the statute books carry discouragement almost to every level which Pakistan's society needs. The ethos of Pakistan regarding women's rights and women's security comes from its religion, Islam. And the Prophet in his last sermon, said, Apni aurton ka khayal Take care of the woman. 15, 1400 years ago, 1500 years ago, in that society, at that level, women were given rights to property, rights to inheritance, which at that time no other society had. In fact, in the developed world, in Europe, Women's property rights were not there until the late 19th century, in most cases in the early 20th century. So from coming from that background, from that ethos, society should have progressed. Pakistan should have progressed further. Bar Barrister Farooq Naseem has been very careful in not uh, giving the ranking of Women, Peace and Security Index. It's very bad and I must share it because what I'm concerned with uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is not the fact that how does the developed world see us or that we should do this for because the European Union says that or the sustainable de the development goals Im impress upon us what to do. We should be doing this for, for our own society. It is us. It is our own priority. It is not how anybody else looks at me. It is what I look from inside <laughs> at myself. So I would therefore divulge the ranking. And it is shocking. It is 164 out of 168 in 2019. Pakistan ranks at 164. And that should be very shameful. That should be shocking for us. And it should be spread. Now why is that happening? B despite ample laws, despite, and I'm very impressed by what was being presented, in fact, honor killings and all, all this, is the tip of, not, you can't say tip of the iceberg, is the tip of the volcano. It's just the tip. It just shows you the severity of a situation. Just at the end, for one, for example, for one honor, honor killing, there may be 100,000 cases of harassment. So we need to discourage that, of course, that's the penal crime, that's a very big crime. But at the same time, we must be talking about violence against women in, in the society itself. And some, uh, some discussion did take place on what needs to be done. And the, at the more the tools are available for communication, the violence is increasing. It's just like when dynamite was discovered, it was, it, for peaceful purposes, at the same time, it had very damaging situations. When uh, nuclear fission was discovered, for example, it was discovered and it was used in both, both, both ways for, for destroying peace and for energy. The similar thing is happening as far as tools are concerned. The internet magnifies the ability and the possibility of communication. Like uh, my friend, Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi uh, mentioned the fact of child pornography. So therefore, we must be thinking in terms of society. The law comes later. The stick of the law comes later. After the stick of the law, as the parliament has done tremendous work in Pakistan, the constitution is there, the laws are there, and thank you, Farooq Naseem Saab, for empowerment of women for, as far as property is concerned. Some new laws are there today where a complaint of any kind of property 
deprivation by a woman can come to the woman, um, woman's ombudsman. But let me give you an idea of where the difficulties lie. The difficulty lies in the fact that when I became the president of Pakistan, uh, I was burdened by this position. Uh, I found out that uh, the Vafaqi Muhtasib gets maybe 200,000 complaints uh, every year or 120,000. And they're able to solve these complaints and redress those complaints almost within six months, all of them. And when it comes to me, I don't take more than a day unless I have to do a personal hearing of that case. And I've decided hundreds of cases. On the other hand, the complaints of harassment, you will be surprised there are less than 100 in Pakistan which come to the Wafaqi Mohtasab, woman Mohtasab. That means people don't know. That means people are afraid. That means, can you imagine in Pakistan where more honor killings have taken place, the complaints of harassment are less than 100 at the forum where they have to be addressed? When you, when you bring a day which is important, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, my wife, for example, when she picked up breast cancer as an issue last year, she said it's not a matter of a day. So I kept on telling her the day is there to highlight an issue. And the rest 364 days in a year, once the day has highlighted it, we will work upon it. But she considered that's not enough. At least you should go out for a month, create a momentum of 30 days at least, which lasts the next 300 days. So I believe similarly, it, it, the day focuses, but well, it should start the engines rolling in every forum which needs to address, in the tel television and film media, there is an issue uh, somewhere the uh, distraction of society is taking place. There's a very good few hours in the evening where the government and the opposition, Shah Sahib, are throwing the kitchen sink at each other every day. And it leads to good ratings of television companies, etc. And I instituted an award for uh, through PEMRA uh, for television media companies which are discussing social issues. And I asked PEMRA to quantify the minutes or the hours, including talk shows, the minutes and the hours where a television, a media company uh, focused on social issues. And we have given, after a, after a quarter of a year or at six months of the year, we did give some awards to three companies which we found, television media houses which we found were, are, act, are doing more work so, with socially responsible ideas. So we need to start discussing this, implementing this, uh, uh, a very important issue. But how? Comes back to the situation how. Like I said, the laws are there. Keep on working on the laws, but I think they are very good right now. Beyond that, the woman is not bold enough to complain. And we don't want to encourage that all marriage disputes are brought into the violence situation. We don't want to encourage that. But we do want to encourage or discourage violence when it is happening and encourage the woman to get some help. Now, when you come to help, you do not have to go to the police station directly. When you look at, for example, when my wife was working on breast uh, cancer awareness, we found social taboos to it. Women were shy to come forward. We, they did not inform even their family of that issue. Leave aside going for diagnosis. And when they were diagnosed, they were still shy to get treatment because they thought the expenses of treatment would be so much that it would destroy the family structure. So these judgments are being made by women themselves, and we need to embolden them. What happens in violence, domestic violence, for example? The woman is degraded. She feels unsure. Look at the psycho psych psychological judgments on these. The woman is unsure. She feels degraded. She feels that if she goes out in the world, she'll be nothing without her husband. And the husband promises every time and this is a psychological health issue. The promises every time after he feels regret, he, he promises that he won't do again, do it again. And the others keep on encouraging, even in Western societies you can see that, the other keeps on encouraging the woman to, to look at it with more substance and if the marriage is not working to walk away. But these women take seven or eight years to be able to walk away. They are battered. 
and the, it's called the battered woman syndrome, psychologically destroyed. We in Pakistan somehow should have an area where the woman can reach out. For example, there was a, uh, the Aman Foundation had set up a woman's, uh, set up a health line called call center. Uh, it found that it was not the men who approached the health call center. It was mostly the woman who, who approached the call center because they, she was not able to go out because she may have been neglected with the husband very busy with earning bread. So this is a woman who called the health centers. Somehow or the other, with only about a, less than 100 complaints coming in, I think the failure is to communicate with women, to increase their presence in public spaces. When I feel very depressed by the fact that when women come out for political purposes, there's a segment of society which again degrades them for in a dharna or in a protest. There are, there are people who start degrading them. But I'm also glad at the same time that newspapers write against such, such, such attempts, some, such bad uh, comments which are being made. But then it is made, made a matter of politics. This has nothing to do with politics. We must separate this from politics, what the government is doing. The major burden comes back on civil society, on the reaction of people themselves, on the reaction of us and our families as far as uh, gender-based violence is concerned, to, to make the women come out. The empowerment of women with property, for example, that is one thing. I, the figures are very poor as far as certain provinces are concerned where women's, women do not inherit property. They are told that we have given you some property as far as your, at, your, at the time of your marriage, but now no more. There, there are intermarriages to, uh, to make sure that the property remains within families and the women do not have right. I have requested the law minister and he's considering that still. The fact that because of this family pressure as, no, as soon as the father dies or the, the male dies and the woman inherits property, she is forced to gift it. It's very common. It's almost, in some places, it's almost 90% uh, women are forced to gift them. And I have asked him, and he's still probing that issue, he's probing that issue that for one or two years, we, we should legally stop the, inherit the, the gifting of properties unless she goes to a court of law and makes a submission that she needs to do it or she's being compensated. She can sell the property, but she should not be able to gift. And I've talked to the Sharia judges in the Supreme Court, I've communicated to them, and they say it is possible, but the ball is in the court of the law minister. Unless she holds on to inherited property, she has no idea of the value, about the value of that property. So for one year or two years, that's how you empower them. Without financial empowerment, as you said, without financial empowerment, the role of women uh, against violence or, or in all other issues uh, is, is, is not enough. To make them, to, to allow public spaces to welcome them without violence, without taunting on the streets, without people discouraging women to come into public spaces, that is very important. And I think what has happened over the last six, seven years particularly, or ten years, that the women have started participating in political movements. As they come out, they will be able to express when issues like these happen. As they come out, and, the, and I found the members of this parliament very responsible women, but I need and I request them to do more because they are the thought leaders. You see, they're not only legislators, they're also thought leaders in, when they go back into society. I've asked the uh, Council of Islamic Ideology to play a bigger role as far as uh, women empowerment is concerned and as, as far as uh, looking at harassment situations. Now, let me, let me uh, impress upon you the fact that there is a lot of depression in society. And, the, and when a part of the reason of violence is the fact that that depression is not recognized. There are estimates in the Western world, and I'm, uh, there are no major estimates of what is happening in Pakistan, but I would presume generally that they are generally the same. Maybe more, or maybe the same, or maybe less, slightly. But 40% of the, 
of people in a society today are, are in okay, occasional states of depression. Today, I read a case when a man, uh, for whatever reasons, he, ba he killed uh, his uh, daughter and uh, severely beat up his wife and severely beat up his son and then he committed suicide. I don't think this is purely economic, there are purely economic reasons. There's, it's a state of depression which takes him there. And there's no place to recognize him. How many call centers are propagated? I saw a list of numbers when the, when the video was going on. That's the most important message. And, I, and it's a matter of marketing. The, I, the, you, you can focus uh, uh, the issue of, for example, honor killings. That's, the, that's just, again, a very dirty, very bad, but very small area. We should be addressing domestic violence generally. We should be viol addressing violence in other matters. But then the telephone numbers, were the, which is the most important message, finally got a very small space. It's like at once upon a time, I used to collect hides for social, uh, for social work at the time of uh, Eid al-Adha. And I, th there were these posters, you know, all posters from all parties who were collecting hides said, Qurbani ki khale in big words, you know, that's what you could see from the car. But who was it? The message was very small at the bottom. So that is, a, that is poor marketing. You have to put up the solution up front so people should see. Encourage these call centers. I don't know how much encouragement it requires because it has to reach everywhere. The possibility of communication is there with every woman. The fact that you are not indulging and destroying the household is important when women call as well. The, ins the insistence should be to build her strength rather than ask her first, as a first choice, to come to a police station, get an FIR done. This is, this is very difficult for women. But at least build the strength up. At least you should have an area where she gradually develops the resistance if there is violence against her. So that communication, I think, is a very important part of what we should be, be doing in, in the future. I know that there's a uh, uh, Human Rights Women's Center and Helplines in Islamabad. I know there's 1043 in Punjab. I know there's a Helpline Sindh Legal Advisory Center. And I think these have to be much more propagated. So therefore, let me come back to the gist of what we are talking about. It's an important issue. It totally is, uh, gets the momentum from, our, from an Islamic ethos. The violence you see is not a part of religion. It has nothing to do. It's a part of culture, inherited cultures of the last, of the dark ages, the hundreds of years before. It has nothing to do with religion. The non-distribution of property has nothing to do with religion. In fact, religion encourages distribution of property. So these cultural traditions have to be fought against. Now, what is your strength in which areas you have to work? We have to work through the mosques. We have to do work through the Islamic Ideology Council. Also, we have to work in the khutbas and Juma. Every, uh, every Juma, a huge population goes to the mosque, listens to the sermons, listens, listens to the fact of what is, what is compassion, what is love in society. And that is the thing which needs to be encouraged and violence definitely discouraged. So I think that the, the fact that programs on television, not only talk shows, but dramas, television films, should be revolving around looking at violence as an issue. They should not be depicting violence in a manner which is degrading to women also. But they should be at least be showing the fact that the end result is a lesson of some sort. And the beautiful television programs and dramas were made about 30, 40 years ago. I don't know where that has gone, but that is one forum which can be encouraged uh, by the main medium. Television and watched uh, the social media can play a very important role, but television and the social media is the wave of the future. And the, the illegal exploiters of these medium are very strong. 
the government will keep on handling them, the cyber crime security bill can help in that. But on the positive side, we should be using um, uh, these mediums well. So ladies and gentlemen, it's an important issue, but not limited to this single day. I, I, need, the, uh, I need you all to carry it home, to insist that violence does not happen. The public spaces are secured, and women are strengthened in jobs, in their ability to work in society, and the public spaces should be increased. And I thank you, uh, the Ministry of Law, for holding such a good program here, in which we can at least focus in one day and then expand our focus as the year passes along. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Slava alaikum.